Hey everybody, it's that time of the month again. Time for a solar update. I'm gonna take you through what I've learned using solar assistant. Now that I'm a bit more comfortable with it, I seem to know how to use it a bit better. It's opened my eyes to a lot of stuff. I'll also talk you through the plans I have for sorting our issue out with running the generator so much through winter. But first thing, we need to get up on the roof and see the state of the panels since we cleaned all the Sahara dust off them in the last solar video. As you can see, not too bad. Haven't cleaned them since the last time. Give them a clean in the next couple of days. Now something else I've thought about these panels get quite hot and particularly as they're lying pretty much flat on the ground. I was wondering if I get a circuit hooked up to the irrigation system that just sprayed water over all the panels once every hour for five minutes. I wonder if that would make a difference to the generation. Drop a comment below if you think I should try that out. Okay, as you can see from solar assistant we're not generating that much we've got a overcast day as you can see over here however we are still generating enough to be charging the batteries we've not kicked off the pool pump or the borehole pump at this stage It's now 7.39 a.m. and I'm going to go and switch on the pool pump. Okay, so that's the pool pump running. We've still got a bit of overhead. Before we can fire the borehole pump, which sucks 3 kilowatts, we're going to have to wait a couple of hours. I'll wait for the solar generation to ramp up a bit more then I'll go and fire off the dehumidifier uh, in one of the rooms that we're busy sorting out rising damp in and I'll show you as we slowly ramp up our load during the day. I still need to tidy up in here that's the pie that's running solar assistant I haven't got a DC to DC converter to run it directly off the battery so I'm just going to put a 240 volt plug on this board so I can get rid of this <laughs> extension cord. Now the current maximum power that I can supply is 8 kilowatts which is fine for one house. When I sized the system it was only really going to be for one house but circumstances changed. I could do with another four kilowatts of power to be honest so I've got two options I can either replace the two inverters with two six kilowatt eight kilowatt inverters run them in parallel or I could try and find another MPP inverter to match what I've got and parallel that one up to give me 12 kilowatts still thinking about what's the best way to go about it Okay, so dehumidifiers running, pool pumps running. We're still in the green as far as battery's concerned. I'll give it another half an hour or so and then I'll fire off the dishwasher which draws up to 3 kilowatts at its peak load. Okay, so we've got 462 excess watts going into the battery, 400 watts call it. There's the battery sitting at 51 volts and getting 8 amps in at the moment. We don't really have leeway. It's now 8.22 a.m. I'm going to fire off the dishwasher now. Okay, so the dishwasher's kicked off. When it first starts off, it doesn't draw much current. It sort of goes through a pump cycle, etc. It's when it's heating the water. So a bit later on, we'll see the draw ramp up a little bit more. 49 volts, it's pulling it down to. It's to be expected, though. But that should be fine because we'll soon be generating more than we're drawing. Dishwasher running, it's out of its heating cycle, so we're in the green on battery. I don't have an issue running the dishwasher early in the morning. 
because it's not drawing three kilowatts continuously, unlike the borehole pump, which sucks three kilowatts from the moment you switch it on till the moment you switch it off. So mom's woken up. Well, maybe, well, as you can see, she has woken up. We're up to four kilowatts, which means she's probably fired the microwave this morning for her cup of coffee. But we should be fine because the dishwasher will finish shortly and then we'll be back into green on the batteries, getting ready to fire, off, fire up the borehole pump. Okay, so the dishwasher's finished. I've switched off the dehumidifier. The pool pump is running and just the standard draw. Uh, looks like mom might be doing something in the kitchen, running the tap probably. It's now time to fire up the borehole pump. I'll go and switch that on now. As you can see, <laughs> borehole pumps on. We're drawing five kilowatts. We're only getting 4.3 in, so that's not too bad. It's dropped down now. Mom's obviously been doing something in the kitchen, so we almost at a break even point here at the moment. So that's where our power draw is going to sit for the rest of the day until about half past three, four o'clock as we irrigate everything. Okay, as you can see, we just slightly in the green with charging. It's now 9.51 a.m. We're drawing 4.1 kilowatts and we at the break even point already. I love summer. Let's see what the batteries are saying they're at. 51.2 volts, pumping one amp into them at the moment. I'm happy with that at this time of the morning. And that's where it's going to stay for most of the day now. Okay, so it's now 10.20 a.m. And as you can see, we're in the green. We're covering our load from the everything that's running, the pump, the pool, household drawer. And we're currently putting 9 amps into the battery. At this rate, we'll probably be up to a full charge at around about half past 3 this afternoon. More cloud cover. We're putting 2.8 kilowatt hours out of the battery. Our load is still sitting at 4 kilowatt. So we'll leave that for a while. As you can see, it sucks the battery down to 69%. Forty-nine point two volts, sucking fifty-six amps out of the battery. Now, if it stays like that for an extended period of time, I'll probably go and switch off the pump to make sure that we're not caning the batteries too much. And just like that, the cloud cover's gone, back to normal. So, after quite a lot of thought and research, I've landed on what charge I'm going to get to see us through our winter woes. While running the generator, I've landed on the EG4 charge verter from Signature Solar. There's nothing else out there that comes close. It'll do 100 amps, which my generator won't support. But who knows, maybe in the future I'll upgrade the generator. So Mandy's in the kitchen making some lunch. It's a little bit of cloud cover going on, but this is fine, the system handles this, no problem. Now the main reason I'm toying with the idea of upgrading the inverters or adding to them is we currently make sure that while we're running during the day we're not using more than about 4 kilowatts. That's to make sure that there's enough of a window or a buffer for mom to be able to put on the oven or whatever her highest drawing item is through the day and then not run the risk of tripping the inverters. Prior to adopting this approach, we had a couple of inverter trips, uh, but we soon got on top of that by changing the way we managed our power. Increasing power will also allow me to make use of the air conditioning uh, that we have. We generally only run that when the pump's not running. So on a hot summer's day, pump takes priority, vegetables and garden needs watered, we'll sweat as long as we can grow vegetables. Now I'm actually keen to stay with MPP Solar 
these inverters have been very good to me they haven't let me down since they were installed in 2019 uh, I'm not sponsored by MPP Solar in any way I just believe in giving credit where credit's due they've been bulletproof ever since I installed them Solar Assistant is another <laughs> tool that I don't know how I lived without also not sponsored but if you haven't seen it go take a look also fantastic fantastic reporting on it so we just about finished watering everywhere I'm gonna go and switch the pump off let me just show you what the battery is sitting at at the moment quickly first so we're sitting at 54 volts not quite charging and it is half past three in the afternoon so I'll go and switch the pump off now and there you have it we back down to our steady draw which is the two houses and the pool pump running let's have a look at the battery so it was at 54 volts with one amp coming into it it's now sitting at 57.8 volts 50 amps coming in that'll be charged to full in an hour if that there we go So I now know I've got approximately two kilowatt that I can draw either by running air conditioners or by running the spa, getting that heated up or using the pressure washer to clean some more <laughs> louvers and shutters. Okay, I'm going to go and switch the spa on. You'll probably see that the solar PV input will increase. I think it's throttling the input now because the batteries are pretty much fully charged as you can see now it's still charging yep there you go solar's come up but it's not enough to feed the spa and charge the batteries. Batteries drop down to 55. Something else is on. It's gone off now. Okay, it's gone into filter mode. Takes us back up to 58.3 volts. So it'll float it there for a while and then drop down to 58 when it's full. I hope that gives you a better idea of what a standard sort of summer's day looks like here as far as managing load and what the generation and draw looks like. So it's Saturday morning, crummy day, it's overcast, solar's not great. <laughs> Let's have a look at the month of June. As you can see, no generator usage, which is great. Couple of days that weren't so great solar wise, but we got through the month, no problem. Contrast that with January that I'm gonna show you now. It's not pretty. January looks completely different. We got off to a good start, no generator usage on the first two days, but then, as you can see the red peaks, that's all generator usage. I think we get two days in a row sometimes where we don't get generator usage. There we go. We've got some decent sun. Decent sun, but still generator. So if we take a look at the month's totals, as you can see, apart from the beginning of June, we're tracking more solar input than load. So that's been a good month. Zero generator run times, no red peaks, as you can see. Uh, June the 30th, we did 44.8 kilowatt hours, which was a good day. In fact, we've had good days pretty much all through June, apart from a couple of days where it was a bit rainy and overcast for a few days. We're down here at 25 kilowatt hours, 29. I think there was one day earlier in June, yeah, 19 kilowatt hours. But we were fine. We can generally run our batteries for three days of those conditions before I need to 
pull out the generator. Now if we go down to the monthly views, you can see for June we did a megawatt and 59 kilowatt hours. <laughs> Contrast that to January that I showed you, 386.9 kilowatt hours. So huge contrast. It makes a huge difference when you're on solar generation to how you watch your consumption. If you find the format that I've used useful, please let me know in the comments and I'll include it in future updates. Thanks for watching and I hope you all have a great week. Cheers.